Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to everyone here this morning at this workshop on streamlining government communication conceived by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and being organized by the Press Information Bureau. Before starting the proceedings at this inaugural session, we would like to welcome our dignitaries on the dais. A special welcome to the Honorable Union Minister for Finance, Corporate Affairs and Information and Broadcasting, Shri Arun Jaitley, who despite his busy schedule has consented to be here this morning. We welcome our dignitaries with a bamboo plant which symbolizes energy and strength. A very warm welcome also to the Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Colonel Rajavardhan Rathod, who has so very kindly agreed to grace the occasion despite his many commitments during the day. We also welcome the Chairman of the Prasar Bharti Corporation, Dr. A. Surya Prakash, and Secretary, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Shri Bimal Julka. We look forward to their inputs during the day. We are also happy to have our Director General, Shri Frank Narona, with us this morning to share his views with all the participants at this workshop. Now, DGPIB is requested to begin the inaugural session by giving his welcome address in which he will lay out the scope and objectives of the workshop. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister of Finance, Corporate Affairs, and Information and Broadcasting, Sri Arun Jaitliji. Honorable Minister of State of Information and Broadcasting, Colonel Rajavardhan Rathodji, Chairman Prasar Bharti Board, Dr. A. Surya Prakashji, Secretary INB Shri Bimal Julkaji, Senior Officials from various Ministries of the Government of India, and the Private Secretaries to the Ministers participating in this workshop, Senior Officers of INB, Media Heads, and Dear Colleagues. It is truly my privilege and honor to welcome the Honorable Minister of Finance, Corporate Affairs, and Information and Broadcasting, Sri Arun Jaitlizi, to inaugurate this first ever workshop on streamlining government communication. His long years of vast experience in diverse spheres of our national life and governance has made him a doyen and an outstanding veteran in multifarious fields. It is indeed our good fortune to have him in our midst today. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. My hearty welcome to Minister of State of Information and Broadcasting, Colonel Rajavardhan Rathorji. His youthful energy and dynamic leadership has provided renewed vigor in various activities of our ministry and its media units. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. We have with us the Chairman Prasabharti Board, Dr. A. Surya Prakashji. He is an author, columnist, with specialization in constitutional and parliamentary studies. We are privileged to have him to address the first session with his vast experience in media and communication. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. Our esteemed Secretary, INB, Sri Bimal Julkaji, has been instrumental in several new initiatives in the ministry, including organizing this workshop. I cannot forget his meticulous and constant scrutiny in his morning meetings with the media heads towards this initiative. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. The core participants of this workshop are the senior officers of various ministries and the private secretaries to the ministers, they are a crucial link in the information dissemination chain of the government. I warmly acknowledge your presence and extend a warm welcome to all of you. I welcome all the senior officers of the INB and the media heads in whom I find a constant support and cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring to the fore the main objective of this workshop being organized by PIB at the behest of Ministry of INB. It is to build a stable and pragmatic synergy between the PIB and the ministries and departments of Government of India. The purpose is to achieve a sustained information flow
for prompt and timely dissemination of authentic information to people through various media platforms. There have been tremendous paradigm shifts in the media landscape. In addition to the mainstream media, the advent of internet and social media has created a world of citizen journalism and empowerment. These days we hear of hashtags, podcasts, tweet storms, selfies, apps, and whatnot. Technology has dimmed the distance between the sender and the receiver, redefining and expanding the boundaries of the media firmament. In this complex scenario, I would not be wrong if I say there is an information overload as various stakeholders are constantly competing for increased media space. In spite of all this, I will also not be wrong if I say that government-related news occupies a significant and prominent space in the media. However, we in PIB are continuously reviewing and upgrading our functions and activities to gear up to these new challenges and opportunities. The Prime Minister himself is a great source of inspiration to all of us in this regard. His latest series of tweets to connect with the 18th National Conference on E-Governance has set out a roadmap for the future and sought a mobile-first approach. I am happy to inform you that PIB is now venturing into multimedia press releases with embedded tweets, infographics, and more live tweeting and webcasting of events. Apart from being present on Facebook and YouTube, we are developing a mobile app and a new state-of-the-art website. PIB is constantly working towards excellence and new adaptations. In this changing media scenario, the officers of the Press Information Bureau, as spokespersons of ministries, have enormous responsibilities in not only providing authentic information, but also in crafting correct perception of the various initiatives, policies, programs, and achievements of the government, enabling people to make informed choices and decisions. Our officers have also the responsibility in providing a comprehensive feedback from the media on how these policies are being received and advise the government on the information, education, and communication strategy. The role of PIB officers in a crisis situation to provide rapid response to media is very crucial and is a specialized job. Friends, PIB has built over the years a credible trust bank with the media. But the prime factor of this goodwill and trust is only information. Information that is authentic, timely, and comprehensive. This mutual relationship with the media has helped many a time to correct the misperceptions and misinterpretations of the government initiatives and policies. In order to continuously deepen and expand such reliable relationships with the media, it's very important that the PIB officer is fully enabled and empowered to be well informed. Dear friends, but all this depends to a large extent on the access they have to the content and information. A timely and quality tweet has the highest reach and visibility to quote our honorable minister. This is where the partnership between the PIB officers and the nodal officers of the ministries and the private secretaries to the ministers, who are the prime and principal access points for content and information, needs to be strengthened and synergized. The workshop has been organized on these premises and I hope will provide an opportunity for mutual understanding and appreciation of each other's viewpoints, perspectives, strengths, and constraints. I'm sure the interactions during the workshop would help evolve a standard operating procedure for better coordination and strategic partnership between PIB officers and the ministries. We have scheduled sessions by senior secretaries from some of the key ministries, the Prime Minister's office, and media experts who will be interacting with the participants. The valedictory session will be chaired by the Cabinet Secretary. Their experience and expertise will be immensely valuable and help build effective synergies among us for efficient, prompt, and timely information flow. I wish you all an engaging, 
interesting and fruitful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your welcome address. Now, Secretary, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Shri Bimal Julka, is kindly requested to make his opening remarks. Param Adarniya Suchana Ivam Prasaran Mantri, Shri Arun Jetli Ji, Samaniya Raja Mantri Suchana Ivam Prasaran, Kanal Raja Vardhan Rathor Ji, Samaniya Adhyaksh Prasar Bharti, Dr. Surya Prakash Ji, Hamare DGPIB, Shri Frank Narona Saab, Upastit Sabhi, Hamare Mantralay Ke Samaniya Adhikari Gan, विभिन्न मंत्रालयों से आए सभी सम्मानित अधिकारीगण एवं साथियों जैसा कि आपको डीजीपीआईबी ने अभी बताया कि यह वर्कशॉप एक बड़ी महत्वपूर्ण वर्कशॉप है जिसमें मीडिया की क्या भूमिका है गवर्नमेंट के संचालन में विभिन्न गतिविधियों का संचालन करने में उसके बारे में विचार विमर्श इस कार्यशाला में किया जाएगा जहां तक इस वर्कशॉप की गंभीरता का प्रश्न है हमारे दोनों वरिष्ठ मंत्रीगण यहां पर उपस्थित हैं आप इससे ही अंदाज लगा सकते हैं कि हम कितना इसके प्रति सीरियस हैं और इसीलिए यह पूर्व में जो जनवरी 15 को होनी थी हमने आज फरवरी 2 को की है कुछ मंत्रालयों से हमारे को इस तरह के तरह के नॉमिनेशंस आए थे कि कोई सेक्शन ऑफिसर को उसमें नॉमिनेट किया है कहीं पर किसी अन्य अधिकारी को नॉमिनेट किया है जो योजना से संबंधित नहीं था हमारा यह उद्देश्य यह है कि इसको थोड़ा गंभीरता पूर्वक लिया जाए क्योंकि शासन की जो विभिन्न गतिविधियां हैं योजनाएं हैं उनका संचालन करने में एक जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी की बड़ी महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका रहती है और जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी का होना इस वर्कशॉप में अति आवश्यक है प्राइवेट सेक्रेटरीज जॉइंट सेक्रेटरीज और पीआईबी ऑफिसर्स का आपस में सामंजस्य बना के रखना अति आवश्यक है इस बारे में निरंतर हम चर्चा करते हैं हमारे प्रातः 9 बजे निरंतर एक बैठक होती है जिसमें सभी मीडिया हेड्स में विभिन्न विषयों पर हम लोग चर्चा करते हैं और जो भी शासन की योजनाएं हैं उस पर गंभीरता पूर्वक विचार विमर्श करके एक मीडिया प्लान हम बनाते हैं कई बार ऐसा देखा गया है कि हमारे जो मंत्रालय के अधिकारीगण हैं उन्होंने भी हमारे को इस बारे में जानकारी दी कि कई योजनाएं हैं जिसके बारे में वो मीडिया प्लान बनाना चाहते हैं उसके बारे में शामिल होना चाहते हैं और मुझे खुशी है कि कई मंत्रालयों के वरिष्ठ अधिकारीगण भी इस बैठक में आते हैं और उस बैठक में चर्चा करके एक 360 डिग्रीस प्लान ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन हम लोग उसका तय करते हैं 35 36 साल के कार्यकाल के बाद मैं इतना अवश्य ही आपको बताना चाहूंगा कि रिस्पोंसिव गवर्नेंस जो है यह क्रिटिकल एस्पेक्ट है गुड गवर्नेंस का आप गुड गवर्नेंस की बात करते हैं उसके बारे में आपको यह देखना पड़ेगा कि आपका एक सिटीजन के साथ कनेक्ट किस प्रकार का है जो भी शासन की नीतियां हैं जो भी निर्णय लिए जाते हैं यदि जनता के हित में लिए जा रहे हैं जो निर्णय उसको जनता तक पहुंचाना हमारा कर्तव्य है और वो किस प्रकार से पहुंचाया जाए उसके लिए मीडिया एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण कड़ी है तो आपका और पीआईबी ऑफिसर्स का और मीडिया का एक तालमेल होना अति आवश्यक है और ये दिन प्रतिदिन इस प्रकार के चैलेंजेस बढ़ेंगे आप देखेंगे कि अब मीडिया का स्वरूप निरंतर बदल रहा है जो इंफॉर्मेशन ब्रॉडकास्टिंग जो मिनिस्ट्री पहले थी उसमें भी काफी परिवर्तन आने लगा है सोशल मीडिया ऐसा है क्षेत्र है जिसने सभी को मात करके एक और अपनी पहल आगे की शुरू कर दी है जिसमें आम सिटीजन जो है वो खुद अपने विचार सोशल मीडिया के माध्यम से प्रकट कर सकता है और उसके बारे में जानकारी शासन तक पहुंचा सकता है तो इसमें हमारा उद्देश्य यह रहना चाहिए कि हम एक जनता से कनेक्टेड रहें आप को अवगत ही होगा कि पिछले 8 महीने में लगभग 75 से अधिक इनिशिएटिव्स इस सरकार ने लिए हैं चाहे वो बेटी बचाओ इनिशिएटिव है स्वच्छ भारत का है डिजिटल इंडिया है जनधन योजना है इस प्रकार के कई इनिशिएटिव्स शासन ने लिए हैं उन शासन का जो इनिशिएटिव्स हैं उसकी 
प्रचार प्रसार भी हमारे माध्यम से किया गया है हम मीडिया ने भी उसमें पूरा सहयोग दिया है लेकिन उसको और संगठित और सुनियोजित तरीके से आम जनता तक पहुंचाने के लिए अब आवश्यक है कि हम लोग एक मिलजुल होकर एक नीति तैयार करें बजट आने वाला है इसके बारे में भी अब चर्चा शुरू होगी हम कंटेंट एनालिसिस जो है निरंतर अपने माध्यम से हमारा सोशल मीडिया हब जो यहां पर एस्टैब्लिश है इसी बिल्डिंग में है उससे कंटेंट एनालिसिस भी हम प्रत्येक समाचार का करते हैं प्रत्येक योजनाओं के बारे में हमने लगभग आज की तारीख में चार सौ साढ़े चार सौ से अधिक कंटेंट एनालिसिस रिपोर्ट शासन के विभिन्न स्तरों पर पहुंचाई हैं आपके मंत्रालय को भी हमने उसकी रिपोर्ट दी है चाहे वो फॉरेन पॉलिसी से संबंधित हो चाहे इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी से संबंधित हो चाहे सोशल सेक्टर नीतियों से संबंधित हो इसकी सारों का जो विश्लेषण है वो हमारे सोशल मीडिया हब में किया जाता है और निरंतर प्रत्येक दिन लगभग दो रिपोर्ट्स ऐसी होती हैं कि जो हम विभिन्न विषयों पर विभिन्न मंत्रालय को भेजते हैं और उसकी जानकारी देते हैं क्योंकि जनता का क्या उसमें विचार है जो शासन की नीतियां हैं उसका भी एक अंदाज लेना अति आवश्यक है और उसको हम मद्देनजर रखते हुए इस प्रकार का विश्लेषण हम करते हैं डिजिटल मीडिया सोशल मीडिया न्यू मीडिया एक नया टूल आपके समक्ष आ गया है जिसमें सिटीजन आपको प्रश्न पूछता है आपसे जानकारी मांगता है और अपने विचार विमर्श करता है उसको भी हमारे को मद्देनजर रखते हुए नीतियों का प्रचार प्रचार प्रसार करना होगा और संचालन करना होगा कम्युनिकेशन स्ट्रेटजी में एक नया बदलाव आ रहा है यह बदलाव हमको देखना है कि उसके बदलाव के हिसाब से हम लोग चलें क्योंकि न्यूज जो है वो प्रति मिनट बदलती जा रही है वो आपके इंतजार नहीं करेगी हम लोगों का इंतजार नहीं करेगी न्यूज अपने आप चलेगी और यदि उस न्यूज में जो वैक्यूम आ रहा है और शासन की तरह से हम उसकी जानकारी आम जनता तक नहीं दे रहे हैं तो वो न्यूज किसी तरह से रिट्वेस्ट होके किसी और रूप में बदल के प्रकाशित हो सकती है तो इसको हमारे को देखना है कि ये वैक्यूम जो है जो योजनाओं के संचालन में आता है वो वैक्यूम को हम किसी तरह से फुलफिल करते रहे तो एक मल्टी डायमेंशनल अप्रोच जो आज की तारीख में है वो मंत्रालयों के प्राइवेट सेक्टर्स के साथ और हमारे पीआईबी ऑफिसर्स के साथ हमारे को बनानी पड़ेगी मिस रिपोर्टिंग की कई कई बारी चर्चाएं होती हैं कि हम मिस रिपोर्टिंग हो रहा है सही तरीके से न्यूज नहीं जा रही है उस रिपोर्टिंग के बारे में यही बिंदु है कि अगर हम आपस में सामंजस्य नहीं रखेंगे तो मिस रिपोर्टिंग स्वाभाविक है कि अन्य कुछ और लोग उसको इंटरप्रेट करके उस न्यूज को संचालित करेंगे परसेप्शन मैनेजमेंट एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण विषय है क्योंकि आज की तारीख में किस प्रकार की आपकी योजनाएं हैं उसका क्या आम जनता सोचती है उसके बारे में वो भी अति आवश्यक है कि एक परसेप्शन मैनेजमेंट की एक नीति तैयार की जाए ताकि उसमें एक सिनर्जी आए हमारे सभी विभिन्न मंत्रालयों के अधिकारियों के संबंध में इंफॉर्मेशन एजुकेशन कम्युनिकेशन ये एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण टूल है कि जो आप लोग जब डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस में शामिल होते हैं और ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी लेवल के स्तर पर एक कैबिनेट नोट की रूपरेखा तैयार की जाती है उसमें इंफॉर्मेशन एजुकेशन कम्युनिकेशन के बारे में आज तक ध्यान उतना विशेषता से नहीं दिया गया है जितना देना चाहिए तो मैं ये आपसे अनुरोध करूंगा कि जब आप लोग कैबिनेट नोट इनिशिएट करते हैं विभिन्न पॉलिसीज के बारे में कृपया उसमें आईईसी कंपोनेंट को भी शामिल करें क्योंकि उसके लिए हमारे को बजट की आवश्यकता होती है तो यदि वो योजना तब कैबिनेट स्तर पर ही अप्रूव हो जाती है तो बाद में किसी भी प्रकार से हमारे को बजट के संबंध में कोई कठिनाई उत्पन्न नहीं होगी फास्टर और इफेक्टिव कम्युनिकेशन फ्लो आज की तारीख में बहुत आवश्यक हो गया है महत्वपूर्ण हो गया है तो जितनी तीव्रता से आप लोग जानकारी देंगे उतनी तीव्रता से हम जानकारी आम जनता तक पहुंचा सकते हैं क्राइसिस मैनेजमेंट हमने अभी देखा कि कई साइक्लोन्स आए प्राकृतिक विपदाएं हुई हमारे सम्मानीय कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी महोदय ने भी उसकी डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट की मीटिंग्स ली उसमें जो हम त्वरित गति से इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लो दे पाए और कई कई जगह तो हमने ये देखा कि ये हुडूड साइक्लोन जो अभी आया उसमें उड़ीसा में सब कम्युनिकेशन चैनल्स को कर गई थी टेलीविजन भी नहीं चल रहा था क्योंकि बिजली ही नहीं थी वहां पर तो एक रेडियो ऐसा माध्यम था जिसके माध्यम से जानकारी आम जनता तक दी जा सकी अब उसमें मैंने ये देखा है कि अधिकारीगण कई कई बार ये मीडिया का बिंदु उठते ही डरने लगते हैं और ये बोलते हैं कि साहब मीडिया की बात मत करिए हम तो अब आपको जानकारी दे देंगे ऐसा नहीं है 
कि मीडिया को यदि आप जानकारी नहीं देंगे या पीआईबी ऑफिसर के साथ उसको शेयर नहीं करेंगे तो किस प्रकार से हम जानकारी आम जनता तक पहुंचा पाएंगे और ये जो डिजास्टर्स और साइक्लोन्स जो हुए हैं उसमें यही बिंदु था कि जब हम जानकारी समय पर दे पाए तो उससे काफी कुछ सावधानियां बरती गई लोकल प्रशासन द्वारा उसमें कार्रवाई की गई और हम आम जनता को काफी हद तक लाभ पहुंचा पाए पीआईबी एक बड़ी महत्वपूर्ण कड़ी है मुझे गर्व है कि हमारे सभी अधिकारीगण जो इस पीआईबी श्रृंखला में जुड़े हैं सभी मीडिया हेड्स जो अपने अपने विषयों में काम कर रहे हैं वो एक बड़ी गंभीरतापूर्वक विचार करके और उसमें काम करते हैं हमारा इनिशिएटिव है कि हम इसको त्वरित गति से आम जनता तक पहुंचा पाए पर लेकिन कई बार इस प्रकार का सामंजस्य जो एक ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी के माध्यम से हमारे को जानकारी मिलनी होती है वो जानकारी पीआईबी ऑफिसर्स को नहीं मिल पाती है और ये जानकारी न मिलने से फिर ये जो वैक्यूम की मैं बात कर रहा हूं वो वैक्यूम क्रिएट होता है तो मेरा आपसे एक विनम्रता पूर्वक अनुरोध है कि अपने विभाग में जिस जिस स्तर पर आप लोग काम कर रहे हैं कृपया पीआईबी ऑफिसर को अपनी बैठकों में शामिल करें वो कोई इस प्रकार के अधिकारी नहीं है कि जो मीडिया को ट्विस्ट करके जानकारी देंगे वो आपके हित में काम कर रहे हैं और आपको सही जानकारी जो आम जनता तक दी जानी है उसमें आपको काफी सफलता प्राप्त करने में सहयोगी सिद्ध होंगे तो कुल मिलाकर अब हम देख रहे हैं कि ये जो है इफेक्टिव गवर्नेंस वो तभी संभव होगी जब इफेक्टिव कम्युनिकेशन होगा और ये कम्युनिकेशन न होने से काफी बाधाएं उत्पन्न हो सकती हैं जहां तक सोशल मीडिया का प्रश्न है आईएनबी मंत्रालय ने सोशल मीडिया पे एक बहुत काफी अधिकतर अपनी रीच बनाई है ब्रांडिंग पैकेजिंग अपलोडिंग ये इन्फॉर्मेशन का हमने शुरू कर दिया है हम चाहते हैं कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा आम आदमी तक इस प्रकार की जानकारी मिल, मिल पाए ट्रेंडिंग ट्रैकिंग और फीडबैक एनालिसिस का हमारे यहां काम होता है कि हम जो भी महत्वपूर्ण योजनाएं हैं उसकी जानकारी लेते हैं उसका ट्रेंड एनालिसिस करते हैं आम जनता के सुझाव उसमें समावेश करके हम शासन के विभिन्न अंगों तक पहुंचाते हैं एक 360 डिग्री अप्रोच ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन हमने शुरुआत की है उसमें रेडियो भी है टीवी भी है सोशल मीडिया भी है प्रिंट मीडिया भी है सभी को शामिल करके हम उसकी जानकारी देते हैं जैसे स्वच्छ भारत है अब स्वच्छ भारत के बारे में हम चर्चा कर सकते हैं एक आध किया पीआईबी का हैंडआउट इश्यू करने से पर्याप्त नहीं होगा लेकिन उसके बारे में निरंतर इसके संबंध में चर्चा होनी चाहिए आप लोग भी अपने अपने विषयों में जहां पर भी आप विभाग में काम करते हैं एक विशेषज्ञों की भी सूची बनाए साथ साथ विशेषज्ञों की सूची हमारे कैबिनेट नोट के साथ दें ताकि उनको बुलाकर हम उसके बारे में एक रेडियो पर एक टेलीविजन पर एक सोशल मीडिया पे डिजिटल वॉलंटियर्स के माध्यम से एक चर्चा विचार विमर्श के लिए शुरू करें ताकि उस पर हर एक बिंदु पर विचारों का आदान प्रदान हो सके ब्लॉग ट्विटर कॉन्फ्रेंसेस गूगल हैंडआउट्स सेक्रेटरीज जो अपनी विभिन्न योजनाओं का संचालक करते हैं वो भी मीडिया से शाही ना हो और सामने आए मीडिया के और अपना विचार विमर्श वहां पर रखें डिस्कशन फोरम जो है सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म पर अधिक से अधिक उसका इस्तेमाल होना चाहिए हमारे सम्मानीय प्रधानमंत्री भी इसके बारे में निरंतर अपना विश्वास प्रकट करते रहते हैं और हमें चाहिए कि इसका हम अधिक से अधिक इस्तेमाल करें एडवर्टीजमेंट्स जो हैं गवर्नमेंट के उसके बारे में भी हमने अब ये शुरूआत की है कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा कम से कम मैंडेटरी एडवर्टीजमेंट्स जो हैं उसके बारे में हम क्राउड सोर्सिंग करके जानकारी लेते हैं और बड़े अच्छे सुझाव हमारे पास आम जनता के माध्यम से आ रहे हैं उनको हम पुरस्कृत भी कर रहे हैं और मिनिस्ट्रीज को भी हम चाहेंगे कि इस प्रकार की प्रणाली को आप अधिक से अधिक इस्तेमाल करें कैबिनेट नोट्स में जरूर एक इनबिल्ट कम्युनिकेशन टूल आप जरूर बनाइए ताकि उसमें उसको समावेश पॉलिसी स्तर पर बनाने के टाइम पर ही किया जा सके इसके अलावा हमारे पास ईएमएमसी की हमने स्थापना की है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर जिसमें जो न्यूज में चल रहा है उसकी भी हमारे को जानकारी रहनी चाहिए ताकि आपको यह पता रहे कि किस प्रकार की जानकारी आज चैनल्स पर चल रही है विभिन्न चैनल्स पर विभिन्न तरह की न्यूज चलती है उसकी जानकारी हम लोग रखते हैं तो आपसे संबंधित विभागों की जानकारी हम आप तक वो निरंतर पहुंचाते रहते हैं अपने एनालिसिस के माध्यम से इस प्रकार के कुछ बिंदु हैं जो आज हम इस कार्यशाला में डिस्कस करेंगे मेरा आपसे विनम्र अनुरोध है कि कृपया इसको एक औपचारिकता न समझें ऐसा ना हो कि अभी इनोग्रेशन के बाद आप सब लोग अपने अपने कार्यालय में धीरे से खिसकने का प्रयास करें 
ये प्रत्येक सेशन में आपकी अटेंडेंस ली जाएगी और एंड में जब शाम को ये कार्यशाला समाप्त होगी जब सम्मानीय कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी भी उपस्थित होंगे तो तब उनके सामने हम इसका विश्लेषण रखेंगे आपका जलपान भोजन इत्यादि का व्यवस्था डीजीपीआईबी साहब ने बहुत अच्छे तरीके से की है मुझे पूर्ण उम्मीद ही नहीं विश्वास है कि आप इसका आनंद उठाएंगे धन्यवाद जय हिंद Thank you very much, sir, for your opening remarks, in which you have, in detail, flagged the issues in information flow dynamics between the government, the media, and the changing media scenario, and how there is a need for further streamlining and refining the information flow dynamics. We are indeed uh, honoured to have the Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Colonel Rajyavardhan Rathod, amidst us today. His youthful energy has always motivated us at the Press Information Bureau, and uh, he is requested to kindly give his remarks to the workshop. Our honourable minister and guide, uh, Shri Arun Jaitley ji, uh, those seated on the dais, and officers, ladies and gentlemen, sitting seated in front. Welcome to this first workshop on social media and government communication. I think these are exciting times. I, of course, heard uh, the secretary request you that yahan ke bunking allowed nahi hai. Please stay here. But I think these are exciting times. I would, I would rather be here. What you have the potential and you have in your hand is the capacity to have your own broadcasting channel, to have your own broadcasting platform. And this is very, very powerful. In today's time, those who win the war are the ones who tell a better story. And it's all about that, perception. And especially being in the government where you, are, you have access to decision making, and in, in a government that believes in communicating what is the decisions that are taking, I think it's even more imperative that you having access to the decision making are able to communicate that to the masses to the people and by doing in, in doing that you could keep in mind uh, speed of information accuracy of the point you want to make brevity of your thought brevity and clarity of your thought finally it's about the message you're delivering that when that message goes what is the take home value from it in fact, uh, there's a very interesting example of, I, I'm sure you all have heard this, this song, Gangnam, Gangnam Style of Sai in Korea. And it's only very recently that I got to know the true story behind it, and it's very exciting. This person says, when he met the YouTube people, he said that I've been singing this song for many, many months, perhaps years, and nobody even noticed this song until I posted it on the YouTube. And it broke the numbers of the the, uh, the recording numbers on the YouTube, and they had to change the software to have the new numbers to record 2.2 billion hits of one song, just because it's been put on the YouTube. So Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, blogs, these are the various platforms that your ministry and you could use to disseminate the information that you're taking in, uh, in your ministry. And I think uh, doing that requires a certain IQ. It requires a certain intelligence. It requires a certain maturity. Hence, if you outsource it to somebody who doesn't have these, these traits, these abilities, the impact will not be as much. And hence, we have asked for a certain kind of people, the kind of people that are sitting in front of us, to understand and therefore take charge of handling this mechanism, handling this broadcasting tool, and to make your ministry, your decisions more effective. I won't take much of your time. I think we'd all like to hear Arun Jaitley ji, who, who is another example of what Gangnam Style did outside. He does it right here with his own broadcasting channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We now are eagerly looking forward to the 
words of guidance from the Honorable Minister of Information and Broadcasting with his vast experience in public life and in the area of information dissemination. Sir, I request you to make your address. Well, thank you very much uh, to the PIB for having organized this uh, workshop. Because when you get civil servants to discuss uh, the new modes of communication and how to live in the present communication system, there is obviously a, a dichotomy. By training and convention, civil servants are uh, trained to remain as much faceless as possible. There are a few who are an exception, uh, who are always in the news, but that's an unconventional uh, sort of a thing to happen. This being a hard reality on one hand, and the second reality being that there are some significant changes in the communication scenario. The first significant change itself is that the nature of the medium has completely changed. I mentioned this a few days ago. Uh, in a memorial lecture that I had delivered. So I just repeat that point. The nature of, conventional nature of the medium was that newspaper pages were sacrosanct. They must accurately report what they are supposed to report. And opinion pages were meant for expressing a variety of your opinions. That's no longer the case. And the reason for this is that the first change that impacted was the entry of 24 into 7 television in the last two decades. When 24 into 7 television came, the definition of news changed. So a conventional PIB release just informing a government program is no news for television. I've always believed that the camera has a very interesting character. It has redefined news to mean what camera can capture. Camera temperamentally doesn't capture great news or good news. It's only if something is out of the ordinary, it is good news for the camera. Camera at times likes uh, people who complained. It can show a pothole. It can't show a, uh, a great road. It can show a drought. It can show a flood. It can show a demolished building. And these are the visuals which camera captures much better than if everything is normal and people are happy. And therefore, the, this itself changed the, brought a second change, which was from mere reporting, 24 into 7 decided that we are not meant to report, we are actually meant to set the agenda. So we are, instead of reporting what is happening, we will set the agenda and get governments and politicians and civil servants to react to the agenda that we set. So instead of a reporter, a television became an important player who wanted to set the agenda. And suddenly we found that we were increasingly becoming 
a society which was whose agenda was being pushed by the media so a media driven society so if you had a headline true or false or a television program the whole parliament or a state assembly could be disrupted on that the media had set the agenda the television debates could be set on that you could wave it before a judge in a court and that will become a pil so every institution in india became media driven so if against a minister or a ministry there was a news item at least three quarters of the next day would be spent in fire fighting on that news item so this is the second change that came because we were only reacting to what the media said i only hope that this was a transient stage the next change is that technology has impacted this change and the future actually doesn't even belong to television it now belongs to the digital media the reach of digital media is massive the costs are very little and therefore the volume of communications will suddenly find a situation where today there are cities in the world like seattle which have closed down formal newspapers and they are only on the digital newspapers the magazines are closing down newsweek has closed down the largest newspaper group in the world one of their owners informed me that the growth rate of their newspapers in most parts of the world is negligible in fact there may be a drop in print media india of course there is because of growing literacy there is that stage immediately won't come but soon or later it's bound to come in many cases compared to the television networks and the newspapers the good web newspapers have a, a higher circulation i for instance have no hesitation in saying that i have now started reading my newspapers before i go to sleep at night and 90% of what i read uh, late in the evening is actually what the newspapers are printing in the morning so except something very special which gets uh, loaded uh, past midnight and even this may be overtaken because uh, my television viewing time has declined because i keep getting news and what's uh, the applications uh, and the headlines across the day so you are a country with the uh, 900 million mobile phones the number of smartphones is almost half of that figure and this figure is going to increase and therefore this convergence into a smartphone the ipads may become uh, irrelevant as the smartphones pick up newspapers television channels they all get converged into one so in this scenario what does a the government do and what does the civil servant do i think it's a great opportunity and it's a great opportunity because uh, there's a huge constituency of people which in this crowded media scene are also interested to get the factual information one difference between uh, the british public broadcaster bbc and a large number of our channels is that on our channels i get to hear the views of the same set of eight people evening after evening news becomes anchor driven whereas when i switch on the bbc for international news i get those 30 second and 40 second uh, news items of uh, almost 50 things that are happening in the world 
so there is a going to be a large constituency of people which knows uh, which wants to know actually what's happening views are also important I, i'm not going to denigrate that hopefully this may be a transient stage now in the game of government there's a huge institutional mechanism which is led by a political mechanism in the political mechanism you may have information officers in every ministry you may have a, a backup team but then political leaders have to decide how much they want to communicate at the end of the day they have to lead from the front so if they are programs of the ministry if they are decisions of the ministry they have to be the best communicators if some of them get into the shell then they are wasting uh, a, an opportunity with no cost and it's an opportunity which is to a great advantage so everybody has to be nudged persuaded <coughs> to really become the face it's very difficult to expect civil servants to become the face so they will always have uh, measures of restraint which which are legitimately thought out but i think uh, there's a huge amount of information and the quality of its presentation which needs to be presented and there is a large constituency awaiting it let me just give a personal uh, example it's not good to give personal examples but just to drive home the point i'll do that in a run up to the last lok sabha elections in august 2013 i started i decided to write a daily blog it started with circulation zero on day one a few thousand people must have read it and it increased i did it till the last vote was cast and without a single day's break uh, by about 10 or 11 o'clock it used to be on my facebook now my friends my political friends others uh, the prime minister himself at that time they used to repost it so by march april may we found that its reach was almost through repost 15 million larger than any bigger newspaper in the world now at least the people who wanted to read me were reading it and it was setting a daily agenda what do i do when i am in government there is a lot of responsibility we have but there are occasions once or twice in a month where you want to make a point it may be related to your ministry or it may be related to some other activity of the government i exactly do the same now a small communication of this kind which is uh, really not much effort goes into it you dictate a small piece it takes you 10 minutes to dictate it takes you 5 minutes to correct with a 15 20 minute effort you convey a valid point to the whole world you may choose to give an interview once in a while to a newspaper or a television channel and reemphasize that point you speak when it's necessary but you speak to the point you choose your lines well and i have found in information that government prepares it should never be long winded it should never be an essay it should be crisp but it must have had a lot of facts and figures and there is a large section of readers viewers who starved of this factual information you can take any such decision you take for illustration the 
Let me pick up the latest incident, something government is concerned with. Friday, the disinvestment department had success in the coal India disinvestment. Now, how would, let me take an illustration, a government can wait. The secretary can speak because it's a very high-profile event. She did. Nothing wrong in it. But what's equally important is For a government to drive home the point, A, it's the largest ever public issue in Indian history. So even the best corporates have not been able to get it, a government department has done it, a PSU has done it. B, compared to every year of the past, last 10 years, you've already retained, uh, reached a higher disinvestment target than ever before. And you have still some months to go, two months to go. You could put the same data, the num it's, it's the highest ever issue where the largest FIIs have come in, foreign institutional investors have come in. Some other issue could have a retail participation, so whatever are the essential characteristics of this, <coughs> if those five or six or seven characteristics are mentioned with the data, there's a very serious section in the pink papers which is interested. There are websites which are interested. There are hundreds of uh, 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 digital sites which could carry it. Because it's important and it, the word gets around. Similarly, in relation to most government activities, There is a distinction between propaganda and information. Your job is not propaganda. You are not trained for propaganda. The discipline of a civil servant is not to indulge in propaganda. In my field we can do it, you can't. And therefore your real job is that government-centric information has to be put out. Now, this information may not uh, find a mention in a prime-time debate. Nothing unusual about it. But in the width of the mediums available, the business pages, the yellow pages, the business channels, the political pages, the editorial writers, blog writers, it still has a capacity to reach millions and millions of people. Your own websites of each department must be credible, the information must be correct, it must be accurate, and it must be, ex in a very reader-friendly manner, it should be presented. The art of drafting it is, not that I have to read it four times to understand what is the point being made, it must be easy to read. So it's in an easy-to-read language an easy to understand language that it has to be presented. There is a large, with regard to each ministry, there is a large assembly, your own civil servants, members of parliament who take interest in that, journalists who cover that ministry, column writers who write about that ministry, newspapers and websites which report about that ministry. This could be hundreds and hundreds of people in that category. These communications should be sent to them, mailed to them, almost simultaneously. And it is only then that you'll find that this uh, word is spreading. 
So government programs, government schemes, government data, government's performance, the more factual and accurate it becomes, the greater it is its credibility. And once we are able to do that, we don't have to really concentrate so much on, uh, on the propaganda aspect of it. It will propagate itself. For any government activity and communication, I think the most important characteristic is credibility of that information, and which leads to the credibility of your own performance. And I think it's here, since joint secretaries really deal with the nuts and bolts of the gov government, when the file passes through them and is corrected, it's only then that uh, in almost 99 cases out of 100 that the government's view gets formed. So you have an extremely important role, and I'm sure uh, conscious of the fact, not oblivious of it, as to the changing media scenario and how things are to be fed into it, you will, uh, to the best of ability, discharge your responsibilities. I'm sure uh, you have many eminent speakers from both the bureaucracy and uh, the media <coughs> who'd be communicating to you, with you today, you also know where the shoe pinches, where the problem areas are. Now, uh, in a, everybody amongst the uh, ministerial team may not be to the same level familiar with the art of dealing with the media. So slowly, everybody has to be nudged. Because we live through the media, we communicate through the media. And it's extremely important that uh, government communications with credibility and effectively are sent to, are, are conveyed to the people. And media essentially is an instrument for doing that. One last word. Media has also become more interested not in the final decision that the government takes, but in the decision-making process. Now, this creates an element of a problem. This creates a problem because I've always believed that a civil servant's job is to honestly and correctly represent his or her views. And when you represent your views, you give both sides of the picture and then say, I think this is the more appropriate step that the government must take. Ultimately, the decision-making authority may agree, may vary, may disagree. Now, because of this change character of media, reporter versus a player, dichotomy which is there on, they'll be more interested in reporting the alleged controversy in the decision-making process. <coughs> now, if everybody in government agrees with the same point of view, effectiveness may be lacking. There may be cases where people have an alternate view and they must be factored in. One, therefore, has to be extremely careful that even when contrarian views are expressed, they are expressed as a part of an honest decision-making process. Ultimately, it's the last decision of the government that prevails. We must be conscious of the fact that we are now in a relatively open society, not much a secret in governance. And therefore, the use of language, the restraint that we exercise in that, even when there is a contrarian view, 
that it should not be a bombshell creating view, it should be a logical possible view. Whereas there are many advantages of a highly open society, an honest expression of opinion is one uh, such area where, uh, which can create issues and then embarrass the civil servant uh, uh, itself. And therefore, this is one reality we must be conscious of, but this is not to suggest that uh, don't express yourself honestly, because uh, you are trained with your experience to do that, and therefore you must be uh, 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 always prepared to give in the best input into the final decision that the government takes. That's all I had to say, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure uh, in the course of the day, many people will have uh, a lot of uh, alternative views also to express. Thank you.